Ford presents What Color Is Your Clean Suit? This is Gary Butterfield. This is Cole Ross. Welcome to season five. Just, just eat the pennies. Yeah, eat the pennies, eat Billy. Eat the pennies, for God's sake. I cannot believe they paired uh, the slowest talking character on the show with a villain that talks slower. <laughs> the, like, it's. I was trying to figure out, because I, I was like, oh yeah, I... I you know, in, on this rewatch, I was appreciating St. Cloud a little bit more than last time. Uh-huh. And I was trying to figure out what had annoyed me about this character <laughs> previous. And it's just that every scene takes like twice as long as any other scene in the show. Yes. <laughs> like, and, and just them back and forth. It just, it's so slow. They even call I, it. I, I like it, but it's slow. They even call it out in the commentary because Billy gets a couple of Wikipedia dumps. Uh, in this one, and it's like, yeah, we gave all of we gave all of that detail to our slowest talking character. Yep. <laughs> yeah. They also, I like how they call it out. They're like, why do we do this research shit? Right. Right. It, it only ruins things. <laughs> it and it and it does. It always yep. just has a part where they stop to show off. Uh, it's something I've, I've been, uh, you know, not. I'm always going to say more sensitive. It's something mm-hmm. I've always been a little bit sensitive to. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Brian K. Vaughn does it really badly mm-hmm. uh, in his writing. Just like whatever I happen to be, whatever the factoid, the fun fact I just learned, I got to yeah. slip it in. We talked about that in you the, uh, in the episode about, uh, 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 oh gosh, the unfilmable about not Hellraiser. What was it? Prince of darkness. There we are. Yes. With the, with the, uh, uh, Carpenter getting real into just like a surface level understanding of quantum mechanics. Yes. Yeah. That's what we, we have here as well. Yes. You know, like uh with with that kind of stuff. And it sounds like I'm I'm complaining like this is a good episode of the yeah, show. Yeah, this this is a I love this episode actually. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This is this is very good. This is very funny. I have there are minor nitpicks I have. Mm-hmm. Uh with it like some some things that don't go anywhere. Yeah. You know, but it it's a uh, it's it's very fun. Yeah. Uh so this is the premiere of season 5. It was written by Doc Hammer and Jackson Public and it originally aired on June 2nd of 2013. Uh, this takes place over the course of three months as Rusty rushes to assemble a ray shield for JJ's Gargantua 2 space station. Yeah. And this is a double sized episode. Mm-hmm. So, season uh, finale of season four, double sized. Yeah. This is double sized, and we're on our way to Gargantua 2. Mm-hmm. Also double sized. Um, yeah. This was written at the end of the season. Uh, so, there are kind of two parts to it. Uh, one, they wanted to reestablish Rusty's concept as a failed uh, super scientist. And then two, they needed to lay the groundwork for all the stuff they had been playing with during the season. Yeah. So, you know, they're like, hatred has breasts in mm-hmm. the season. Why does hatred have breasts? Yeah. Here's why. Here's the origin of them. Uh, titties. <laughs> yes. Uh, as, as, as establishing the breasts and then, uh, and then they're, we're going to get an explanation. Check all his breast. Yes. Uh, you know, like B- Billy, Kind of takes more of a front seat, and he gets a uh, he, he gets an arch an, an arch nemesis uh, in this one. Mm-hmm. So we have to kind of show the process of Augustus Saint Cloud getting into uh, getting into the guild, um, and all of this is kind of to this backdrop of this thing that I love, Project Palamon. Um, where working on this uh, space technology is mutating uh, all of these college interns, and they develop a Zardoz society. Yes. Yeah. It, it, this turns into a lot of different little sci-fi movies, uh-huh. including like the Ewok Village. I love it. <laughs> the Ewok Village part's very funny to me because, like, where's that music coming from? Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're playing that. Oh, gosh. Um, I, I mean, and also, like, Thurwell is doing an incredibly good job. At, like, he's having so much fun riffing on the t- the kind of music that is in those movies. <laughs> yeah. It's very cute. Yeah. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's real good. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, so it's they had to uh, they had to break it out. The reason why they had to make it an hour is because they had to establish all this stuff. Yes, that we talked about, um, and uh, yeah, it's it's well used. Mm-hmm. Um, good guest stars in this. Uh, Kate McKinney plays a character named Talia. Uh, mm-hmm. Very funny. Your frizzly frisbee became violent. <laughs> um, uh, Ziz Ansari pre cancellation mm-hmm. uh, plays a character here. It gives a real good uh, voice performance. Yep, and then Wyatt Snock. Uh, Cynic as uh, Tom, and they talk about how these were just regular people, and yep. they don't know how to write for them, yeah. so they just let the the actors kind of make them into characters. Yeah, and, and they did a good job. They happen to pick like three really good actors at making regular people uh, charismatic. You know, 
Yeah. Uh, man, I just, whenever Wyatt Snack shows up as a guest voice and something, he just blows it away for me. One of my favorite uh, kind of like underrated VO guys. Yeah, he's, he is good. Mm-hmm. He's good. Um, and it's so weird to see Kate McKinnon show up so often on the show because it's before everyone knew her name. Right. You like, know? I think, I think that she was on SNL at this point, uh, maybe like or may, maybe as a writer or something like that. But yeah, this is well before they really put her on the front bench with, uh, with 2016 Hillary stuff. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. <sighs> It's getting yeah. to get chills. And thinking. before one of the only two canonical Ghostbusters movies, yes. Ghostbusters and Scott McCall. <laughs> um, one of the only two canonical. Yeah. What's the other yeah. canonical uh, one? Ghostbusters 2? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, yeah. Um, the, uh, yeah, so let's, uh, let's get into it. It's a long episode. we got a lot to cover. Yes, we do. Uh, we open up right after uh, the end of Operation Prom. It is morning, and Brock picks up Molotov's chastity belt. He thinks he's alone, so he smells it, and surely rightfully calls him out for it. I, I don't think he's smelling it for... You, you think that's... I don't think he was smelling it for pussy reasons. I think that's surely being... I, being he, he gets it right him. up to his snoot, and he, he he does a big pull off of it. Yeah, no, he smells it, but it's not for pussy reasons. He's smelling it because he's trying to, to he's like snuffing for clues. He's, like, he's, sure he's like, like he's, tell he's, me you didn't he's wake you up fucking, just to smell your panties. And he, he's like, I'm not in the mood, man. He's like, he's, he's, he's not fucking Wolverine, dude. <laughs> I, I don't, it makes no sense for him to be doing it for horny reasons. I, I don't think he's doing that. Yeah. I think the joke is that Shore Leave makes that joke. Okay. And, and Brock brushes him off because he's not in a joking mood. True. His, uh, his, 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 his old flame just died or so he thinks yeah, like, yeah, uh, I, I don't do not. Maybe her perfumes on it or something. Huh, I don't. There's there's no horniness to it. In a way. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I guarantee I'm right about this. I don't want to fight about it for the whole episode. But nope, we're not moving on until we settle this. <laughs> if, the, uh, if, if you're listening to this, go ahead and, and vote in. But I think that to, to me, it felt clear in the scene. Mm hmm that the, the, the beats were surely was joking and he is mm. upset. Yeah. Yeah. Um. um we we we, oh. we we can proceed. Uh, the outrider drops Dean back off, um, and I'm very happy that Dean has stuck to his guns uh, and yeah. uh, continues his stance toward uh, toward him is go fuck yourself. Yeah, I, t- I thought I told you to fuck off. Mm-hmm. Great line. Yeah. Um, he goes looking for Hank, uh, but Hank's not there because Hank is uh, has been statutorily raped by his best friend's uh, mom sister. Yes. Yeah. So. She's uh, hovering over his sleeping body, he's sleeping on Dermot's uh, Dermot's floor. Uh, she's being real creepy, saying, "You smell like gasoline." Uh, but then, yeah, uh, it's real weird. <laughs> then, this also never goes anywhere. Yeah. Uh, in this episode, it's not even commented upon. Nope. Like Hank just got laid, uh, presumably, and then nothing, nothing comes of it. It's very strange. Yeah. Um, but, uh, Dermot's quote, mom comes and kicks him out or comes and kicks Hank out and he wants nothing to do with the ventures. Uh, yeah. uh Sergeant hatred. He thinks he's going to be reunited with uh princess tiny feet. He's talking with her about, uh, how they're going to live their new life as he again, carries her tied up over his shoulder back to the house in malice. Uh, but who greets him at the door, but Scorpio. Yes. Uh, basically putting an end to that character. I love this in the commentary. It's like, well, there goes Princess Tiny Feet. They give her like three lines. <laughs> uh, you know, and it's it's just to put uh hatred's not gonna have his happy ending here. No. no. Uh, he also basically is fine too. Yeah, yeah. Uh with this thing that he was like crying and freaking out about last season. Like this opening is where like a lot of the plots that don't go anywhere. Yeah. Kind of start. Yeah. Just kind of doing doing a bit uh, of a reset for us i mean also like reminding us of what happened at the end of operation prom because as of the time this came out it was like three years yeah yeah absolutely like you need the the reminder for sure yeah uh the monarch and dr mrs the monarch take a cab home dart the driver uh and the idea is that the monarch is in denial about 21 quitting Mm -hmm. you know uh this segues us over to 21 where osi soldiers draw their gun on him he's sleeping in the sphinx headquarters after prom yes uh, and, and Hunter demands an explanation from him. Rusty wakes up. I love that he's sleeping in nothing but a dicky. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's very, very funny. Yeah. Uh, JJ's there. You know, JJ, who hasn't been around all season four, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, wanting an update on the Ray Shields. 
Yeah, you know, he, he contracted his brother, uh, you know, and uh, Rusty's like, oh, you know, it's it's happening. I can't hear you over the ray shielding you know, at the factory. <laughs> yep. um, he's, he hasn't done this at all. No. He goes to wake up the woman in his bed and she's one of the fly monsters. Of course. And big joke that he ended up betting one of the uh, the fly creatures. <laughs> uh, it's it's weird that Brock missed one. Um, yeah. You know, and speaking of Brock letting things get away, get away, he climbs down to the wrecked limo and uh, uh, curses. He stabs Monstrosa's body and it deflates. It is a decoy. Uh, their work yep. is not done yet. Both Maul and Monstroso are at large. Yes. Uh, a bummer. I would yeah. have just preferred the Molotov. That was a good climax for that story. It was. You know, again, like uh, most of my quibbles with this episode are in this first part. Yes. Kind of what it's setting up. Mm-hmm. Um. So uh, we go back, all the Sphinx people are packing up their stuff to head back to OSI, uh, since Hunter is the new HNIC of OSI. We're mm-hmm. no longer on the blacklist. Um, <laughs> and uh, they're leaving 21 behind. He's like, hey, don't I get uh, grandfathered in? doesn't work that way. Um, you know, what am I supposed to do? Well, it's paid up for the year. Go mm-hmm. nuts. <laughs> You're Sphinx <laughs> now. He's, he's Sphinx. <laughs> uh, so now 21 is the sole commander of Sphinx. Yeah, and just kind of becomes a groundskeeper. It's very funny. <laughs> Uh, uh, Rusty's called conjectural technologies over to the kitchen and he's explaining the remit of their, uh, their project. Uh, he's demonstrating space debris by throwing ketchup packets at hatred. Uh, mm-hmm. and, 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 or Hank is the one throwing this. Uh, and as he demonstrates the cosmic rays by flashing the flashlight at him and going, woo, 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 woo. it's very cute. God, I just love Hank. Uh, Billy says, you know, this will take years. And Rusty says we have exactly three months to do it. Mm-hmm. So uh, he's taking a science thing and he fucked up. Yeah. He's getting his friends to uh, bail him out. Uh, Dean walks in dressed up in black in a black speed suit, carrying a can of gasoline. Uh, and he's out. He goes out to the, lo- the lawn to burn his uh, his learning bed. Yeah. Sweater vest, everything except for Mr. Ricci. Yeah. It's it's very sweet how he is about to throw him in, but uh, but, but retains retains him. That is a, uh, yeah. you know. Uh, yeah, I, I like that. It's endearing. And uh, Rusty runs up saying, like, hey, is this your pyromaniac phase? And Dean starts rattling off, like, all of these little facts just about keywords that Rusty says. And then goes into the speech saying, like, hey, you know, like, this this bed, like, taught me a lot of shit, but not anything real. Like, I've never even French kissed a girl. Like, this is this is BS. Yeah. You know, I need to be my own person. I don't want to be a boy adventurer, a super scientist. He needs to kind of stand up and be himself, right? Yeah. And and Rusty says, you know, uh, okay, well, if you help me with my project, you can have the attic, Mm -hmm. you know, have your own room, have your own space. Uh, (laughs) Ipso facto, uh, Hank gets his own Hank cave. Uh Uh-huh. I I love that they describe it as Dean going Greg Brady, uh, an actual, an an actual episode of the Brady Bunch where Greg uh, uh, gets his own bachelor pad. It is the most embarrassing 70s ass thing in the entire world up in the attic. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the uh, uh, classic Greg Brady. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, kids. Uh, when it's time to change. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we we get a montage of them getting the compound ready to do this. Uh, they had to clean out the factory, uh, get the gorillas out of the Eden, um, <laughs> as a callback to the buddy system. Um, I love you know Billy come there you know comes out covered in steaks. And hatred shoots the gorilla, and then all the babies wander out. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> like hatred, just like super sad, just just uh, crying, and just, as, yeah. crying as he pulls back the bolt on his rifle. <laughs> yeah, very oh. good. Oh man! Uh, so it's been some time. Pete and Billy ask for some payment, uh, but he blew through the advance years ago. And again, uh, but he has got a line. He's he's going to uh, get some uh, get some cash to set up the operation. His best customer is showing up and warns them, "Hey, he's kind of a he's a bit of a pill, uh, but uh, don't worry." And up comes the Batmobile, and Billy mm-hmm. is pissed off because it's his rival. Yeah, the Batmobile from uh, from Batman Two, mm-hmm. very specifically, Augusta St. Cloud. Uh, the uh, St. Cloud is a lot, speaks really really slowly. Mm-hmm. The performance of Doc Hammer as Billy hating him, mm-hmm. like every single time he says St. Cloud is really good. <laughs> yep, it's uh, got it's real uh, hello Newman uh, kind yeah. of energy. <laughs> Cloud, <laughs> like just choking on his rage. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, and Augustus um, St. Cloud, he's he's extremely rich. He's very wealthy. Uh, he has kind of like a like a, a what does that hair do? It's like a mod bowl bowl cut kind of thing. It's like a Prince Valiant almost. Yeah, haircut. 
Yeah. You know, it, it, yeah. It's a, it's like this mod haircut. He's a chunky little man. Mm-hmm. And he speaks, uh, and, yeah. speaks, mm, uh, kind of, kind of everything has that kind of, that kind of lilt to it. Yeah. As just as a joke, one off character from tag sell, you're it like <laughs> doing Buffy's own Sarah Michelle Gellar. Goody yeah. mags. <laughs> uh, the uh, him being a rival for Billy makes sense because he is a collector who does not actually appreciate the stuff. Yeah, it's, he just it's is there for the like the the value of it. Yeah, it's just the, about uh, ac- accumulation and rarity as opposed to the actual you know specialness of the you know inherent to the up. things. Yeah, about being a fan. Um, so he's here. Uh, he's just been buying all this old venture stuff, which pisses Billy off because Billy's the biggest fan of the old rusty venture show. Yeah. He doesn't have the money though. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dean talks, uh, to about his new style to Sergeant Hatred, you know, black is how I feel. So black is what I wear, mm-hmm. you know, uh, as they're, they're sitting there, uh, at a table at the, for the Paleomon project, um, recruiting at the state university. There. Yeah. And uh, Talia walks up, our first introduction to her. Um, this is like, I think this is all saved in the performance. The yes. idea of an incredibly politically correct college student. It's a little tired. Is, yeah, it's a little bit of a tired joke. The performance is really good. Yes. Yeah. Uh, here. And the the uh, little ad libs and stuff that she throws in there are really good. Your frisbee turned violent. Yeah. Turned, yeah. Very mm-hmm. good. They, and they they, they, um, they they don't hammer it very much. Like once the plot gets going, she drops that tick and kind of goes full, you know, whole hog into the uh, uh, into the mythology. Yes. She wants to be the queen uh, in the second age. When uh, Dean, when, you know, he gets hit by the Frisbee, he kind of has this little fantasy uh, about him and Thal- Talia. Each one ends with her just placing her hand on his dick. <laughs> yep. And then the final one where there are, it's a Star Wars poster and she does it. And then the alien does it as well. Mm-hmm. It's like, it's really good. Yeah. I love it. Um, yeah. yeah. But the, but they hit it off. She is immediately into Dean and he's immediately into her, but it cannot be because she has manufacturing class. She cannot come to the house. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so we, we go to rusty addressing the interns. Um, you know, you're here because you're the best of the best. And we get one of the guys like, I major in sports medicine. (laughs) Uh, And basically they all go along with it. Uh One of the weird, like, so this is a, this has a more elastic cartoony reality than the show has had. Yeah. Previous to this, like, this is a really silly episode. It's extremely silly show. Like this, nobody acts like they would act. Mm hmm. Uh, in this, in a way that I like it because I love the the show mm-hmm. and I think the episode's really fun, but it kind of is indicative of season five's like, we're a cartoon, damn it. Yeah. You know, uh, through line. The, the uh, I think that that sense of unreality is saved because Rusty is the only person who um, continues to act like he would uh, because of his obliviousness and self-centeredness. I'd like, I, I, I like that contrast. I think that's a really good thing. I mean, the, the payoff, you know, the, the payoff line for 21 where he says working for you in the monarch is basically the same thing yeah. um, is incredibly yeah. good. It, it's the, he, he acts fine. It's more like these interns mm-hmm. that I don't, that I kind of don't get. Yeah. You know, it's very weird mm-hmm. uh, to me that they all just go along with it. And like, we're going to live here unpaid <laughs> and become slaves Yeah, and just instantly go along with it. <laughs> Yeah. You know, uh, it, it, it ends up making, cause you, generally like venture brothers is about the contrast of the venture world. Yeah. And when you run into people from the real world, they're not like in on it. Yeah. You know, they're like, oh, that man, that compound's fucking creepy. You know, they have all these dead bodies <laughs> buried. They're a big mess of dead kids. Uh-huh. Like they react realistically and that's the joke. Yeah. And here he just happened to find hundreds of people who are just giant. Yeah. Why nots? Yeah. You know, uh, it's strange. Yep. It's it's like it ends up clashing a little bit for me. It's worth it, like because where where you get with it is fun. Yes, but it doesn't. It feels like a mild betrayal of one aspect of the show. Yeah, I, I hear what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Um, the uh, so uh, you know, hatred says you know your crowd work is really bad. He gives his like you know you're in immediate danger, <laughs> or you're in incredible danger, mm-hmm. uh, because Doc has many enemies. Um, and they split them up into different colored clean suits where we're getting our, our title from. Yes. Um, the white clean suits are development class. The orange clean suits are manufacturing class and the green clean suits are special class, which are slaves. Yes. Rusty <laughs> slaves who They're, all have the same name. Yes. Uh, <laughs> they, they are Rusty's personal servants. Uh, they're the only ones who are allowed in the house. 
And then Hank, yep. he takes the mic. Uh, you know, since he has a captive audience, he is going to uh, set up a company store uh, at Hanko Superworld that will that will provide for all of their needs. This would be a good plan uh, if he didn't just issue his own currency. <laughs> yeah, Hank box. It's like that. It's always sunny uh, thing where they do the the Patty's box. Mm-hmm. You know, like oh, then they'll come back and spend regular money. Yeah. Huh. So, yeah. I mean, David Busters makes it work. Yeah, exactly. So Hank can do it too. I love, uh, I love the Hank bucks. I love the, the picture of him with a beard on one side and then Enrico <laughs> Montoya on the other side. Yeah. And also in the commentary, them talking about like, oh yeah, that was a day when we sent this off to the printers to have them print us some Hank bucks and they wouldn't do it. <laughs> it makes me really wish that I got Hank bucks because they, they went with a towel that was a giant Hank buck mm-hmm. that you could buy. Um, it's in the back of the art book. They show all the merchandise they've done. Uh, that towel is now impossible to get, but I would love to have the gigantic Hank Buck towel. Oh, yeah. It came with real Hank Bucks. <laughs> uh, so as the uh, as the kind of flourish to this, Rusty hits the button to activate his model of some of the technology here, and it overloads and magnet- magnetically pulls all of the electronics into it, starting off the uh, the project with a, uh, with a disaster. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so R- Rusty just kind of walks around giving little pep talks to everyone, you know, yeah. just kind of thinks it's going to, it's work, work itself out. Yeah. He's, he's, he's doing um, his, like his version of contributing, doing the whole management by walking around kind of thing. Like yeah. it's very good. Um, they built a functioning shield, mm-hmm. which is pretty impressive, uh, here. Um, they, uh, they show, uh, you know, when somebody stands behind it and they start ta- using, a pitching tennis balls at it. And, and, you know, there's like, oh, you know, but mother, you know, space doesn't play gentle and he tosses a rock through, uh, the rock goes right through the shield, um, ricochets to a ray cannon that, uh, seemingly dissolves the intern. Yep. I love the way he comes back later. He's out of phase. Uh, they do like an event horizon thing. (laughs) I, I've, I've got a mild bone to pick with that scene, but we'll, we'll oh, okay. get to it. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. I like I like that it happens. Yes. Um, but uh, uh, James Urbani asked delivery on your figures are bad. They're bad figures. <laughs> yeah, they, they had double checked. Martin had double checked the figures. Yes. Uh, and he has to go take a time out in the Faraday cage. Again, <laughs> I have no idea why these students are dealing, you know, putting up with any of this. Oh, they're powerless. They've um, got to get their credit. There's a, yeah, it's not like you can complain about your boss at an internship. Ah, you, I, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We, the, uh, the, um, so his watch gives him a radiation warning. So he's going to get out of there, which is going to be our, our little load bearing plot thing. Yes. Here. Um, you know, hatred watches the, the paleo, Palemon uh, interns leave the factory and go into this Eden and draws a gun on 21 thinking like, what are you going to be up to? And he, mm-hmm. you know, what are you doing here? And he's patrolling the Sphinx perimeter. Yeah. He's the Sphinx guy. Yeah, uh, and they, they they take swipes at each other's weight, and 21 points out Hatred's uh, even more pronounced breasts, uh, which is, you know, going to be a thing. That's well, really they're, good. They're getting more and more. They're going to become more pronounced as yes. the, uh, the stuff happens. These are just normal man breasts. Yeah. He's going to get uh, gigantic, you know, uh, Lady Dimitrescu breasts. <laughs> yeah, he's going to get a, he's going to get big supernaturals. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so over at the, uh, at the cocoon, the monarch is lying on his bed. He's dressed like Cal Drogo from Game of Thrones, uh, getting mm-hmm. ready to have sex with, uh, Dr. Mrs. The monarch and calls her in, but she comes in dressed as Rocky. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> uh, you know, I thought you told you said you were dressed up like Drogo <laughs> or, Din- or Drago. Yeah. Drogo, you know, uh, and they, they get into this, uh, this little fight. Uh, yeah. the monarch's like, you know, you, you used to watch that with me every, every week. turns out, you know, you watch that with 21, uh, <laughs> and Tim Tom walks in, uh, just like, <laughs> you gotta do it rock. They just, uh, it's very funny. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is so like, th- like this would be kind of lame, like, haha, one character kind of sounds like another to a certain degree to me. Like we just got to get some game of Thrones in here. Uh, it's mm-hmm. leavened by, uh, you know, the sad detail about the monarch in 21. Right. But Tim Tom, uh, being dressed up as Mickey, uh, takes it to the, it takes it like up a level. And then, uh, Kevin walking in dressed as clubber Lang takes it up five That's levels. So good. Like, how are they going yeah. to be involved in this? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. Like what it, it's, it's great. I also, I like the detail from the, uh, the commentary of this being, cause this was before game of Thrones, uh, you know, ended and everyone hated it. Mm-hmm. Um, when it was still a thing that like a person could be into and somebody else could just like never have heard of. Yeah. You know, basically like this it mirrors conversations that, 
Doc and Jackson had. Yeah. Yeah. Because Jackson was way into Game of Thrones and Doc Hammer obstinately uh, has not seen a single frame. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. Waiting for it to end. Uh, cool. There's also the weird little bit of like him watching a Deadwood commentary. And then mm-hmm. like, you're the only person in the world watching the Deadwood commentary right now. <laughs> like uh, years after it ended. Yep. Uh, yeah. So uh, very cute little scene. Mm-hmm. Um, we go back, um, you know, to the green clean suits inside the, the compound. Uh, they're all named Tom. And one of them uh, brings Rusty a docktail. Uh, you know, he's drinking, there's no, no such thing as too much grenadine. Yes, there uh, is. Maybe you think it's a, a red mocha cooler. It's so thick. Grenadine is yeah. so thick. There's a, a healthy pour of grenadine <laughs> in, uh, in this drink in the recipe. Yeah. Um, a tall pour, I think is what he Ew. says. Uh, and a horn blows and we get some dramatic music. Uh, there's a you know, great dread, uh, as the greens, you know, they, they're not exposed to the radiation, but they must, uh, go, uh, live in the Eden. Uh, and this Tom, the, the main one, uh, uh, begs Rusty, Hey, can I, can I, can I stay with you? We are in danger out there. And Rusty's like, Oh, they're just jealous because you get to work so close to, you can get you work so close to greatness, you know, and then sends them away anyway. Rusty oblivious to uh, the society that is forming on his on his compound. Yeah, uh, the uh, so Rusty hears hatred yelling. Uh, what he yells is he does the little thing from a Christmas Carol. Yes, like he does, apparition spirit. That's the thing that that seems dumb to me. I don't know mm. why he would do this little rehearse rehearse speech about this ghost, and he's like he's scared of it in a religious way. He's mm-hmm. a ghost specter who torments me. And that just doesn't sound like hatred to me. Yeah. It just feels like a reference for the sake of doing a reference. It's it's, it's also a little bit much in the same episode where he does Charlton Heston uh, in Planet of the Apes and Soiling Green. Yeah. And th- yeah, th- th- those make a little bit more sense because it leans into the, you know, the dystopic the sci-fi genres. thing. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's a weird because the show, you know, and they, they talk about the, you know, part of the thing that's special about the show and I wonder if this is going to end up feeling like a through line through season five for me, because mm-hmm. I have a vague sense that I don't like season five as much as its surrounding seasons. Mm-hmm. Um, and a part of it is like, they talk about how their humor uh, comes across. Honestly, like it's character based. Mm-hmm. It's kind of not in this episode. Yeah. Like there's, there's good character work that happens in it, but it's really inconsistent mm. in this stuff. Uh, you know, so we have stuff like this, like hatred acting like this, which doesn't make any sense. Uh, you know, to me, it's just for like a little reference. It's not even a joke. No, yeah. it's just like, what if he says the thing from something different? Yeah, yeah. You know, that shit it's, bums me out. I, I think that's for lesser shows. Yeah, to and do, you, to you just know. have somebody parade a line from another thing. Yeah, they they, they they could have gotten around there just by having to say, "Oh my gosh, it's a ghost." You know. Yeah, um, you know anything. You yeah. know, and then this also doesn't go anywhere. Like right, it doesn't. Right. Like this feels. You know, they call it out. And I'm really glad they call it out in the commentary because when I was watching it again, I was like. Oh, I've totally forgot about this. And yeah. it's because it doesn't, it's like the start, it's like a dangling plot. Yeah. I mean, it's like, you know? like, like this is the, this is a weirdly, I mean, it's a payoff to the, the guy who was dissolved earlier. Um, yeah. you know, it just, it, it, there, there's no, there's no third step to it. It doesn't, it, him just being dissolved also would have been like, that was a payoff. Yes. That wasn't, that wasn't a, a question, you mm-hmm. know, it was just the joke was, oh, science, super science happened. Yeah. It was more dangerous than he's leading them to believe. Mm-hmm. And then this is them twisting the knife by saying he's an intern who's out of phase, mm-hmm. you know, uh, here, like the, he's begging for death and everything. And it just feels like a hat and a hat Yeah, to me. Yeah. Um, and then it ha- that doesn't, doesn't do anything. Yeah. It's just another stone piled onto rusty being oblivious and callous, you know, he's like, Hey, yeah. have, have you, have you figured out, a, have you developed the thing that would let you get back into phase yet? No. All right. We'll get back to work. You know, not, yeah, well, you can't uh, get back to work. He's not screaming agony, fact, he's, he's stuck in your compound. Uh, yeah. He's, he, he's, in the, he's in the nega world or whatever it is. <laughs> like, yeah, you're not making any sense, rusty. Mm-hmm. You know, usually the character, like nothing will take me out of something than more than characters is acting stupid yeah like if they act unintelligent it will throw me out of things like yeah there's a there's a you know they're not the brightest bulbs right mm-hmm. he's a failed super scientist right but he's also he would know better than that huh? you know it's actually what it is is he makes that line here's what it is this is the season where the characters start making jokes for the audience mm. instead of each other so that like get back to work mister that's like a little like there'd be a sitcom laugh at that yeah yeah you know but he knows that that's not realistic. Like his character would know, but it's just for us. Yeah. And that feels wrong to me. Hmm. 
it doesn't feel very venture brothers yeah but i mean i i i, I, I yeah, i'm hearing what you're, what you're saying i just it just didn't stick out that much for me so that's why i'm not like yeah. like uh yes ending you on it no, it's 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 coupled with the 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 hatred thing yeah of just this scene it's not a, it's not a huge deal or anything like i ended up liking this episode but i wonder if that what i was like subconsciously picking up on when i watched season five mm-hmm. before like several times and didn't like very much was more of that yeah and i'll keep you an know? eye out for it at, you know yeah, to, to, to see if i can back you up on it yep yeah yeah um so uh this is there's a commercial break and this is where the halloween special would have happened mm-hmm uh, if they have done that, um, Dean's talking to Talia, you know, about how he's a clone. He feels very alone, mm-hmm. uh, there, uh, Rusty shows up and says, Hey, you know, white clean suits aren't allowed in the house, you know? <laughs> uh, and he says, you, you tell you, you better tell her, tell, tell him about, uh, what happened to you. Yeah. And so she, she opens up her clean suit, says this will seem sexual, but it's not. Um, and mm-hmm. shows that she has grown, uh, kind of two wiggly little arms, a little bit lower than her, uh, normal arms on her torso, uh, being exposed to the radiation is causing, uh, causing these mutations and the arms are kind of, uh, not, not, <laughs> that's not the extent of it even. Um, and she's like, yeah, is there something we should do about this? Uh, and Rusty again is playing it down like, oh, that's happened to me before. Don't worry. You can use those to speed up working on the project, you know, just kind of turning yeah. everything into, you know, saving his ass, uh, for the contract yeah. with his brother. Yeah. Eyes on the prize. Yeah. There. Um, we go back to St. Cl- or we go to St. Cloud. We see the outside of his house. Uh, they did not get as much detail as they wanted mm-hmm. for the outside of his house. Um, and I don't think this ends up becoming an establishing shot. We use a lot. No, there is this no. like, beautiful painted version of the outside of his house. <laughs> I, love, um, I love that. It has the pyramid from the outside of the Louvre. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a lot of things he stole from the Louvre and an Apple store. Yep. Um, he's giving a tour to watch and ward, uh, here it takes him to his sunken little lounge, uh, to discuss business. Um, and he's basically just donated a lot of money to the, the guild widows and orphans fund <laughs> to get fast tracked. Yeah. Uh, into the guild. Yeah, he's just cutting through all the red tape with his inordinate amount of money, um, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> because they ask him, like, oh, so you're saying, Cloud, do you have, like, weather powers? No, he's just like Lex Luthor. His power is that he's rich. He's uh, very rich. Yes. Uh, and like, yeah. okay, well, let's get you set up with an arch. And they pull it out. And, of course, the first page they open up to is Dr. Quim. I love that they just, that, that, that nobody's buying, <laughs> nobody's buying the Dr. Yep. Quim stock. <laughs> Nobody wants to arch. That's still in that weird all female Venture Brothers universe <laughs> that they hinted out. Yes. Uh, but uh, St. Cloud says there's no need for that. Uh, I will only accept one arch, uh, Billy Quizboy, because he took something from me. Yeah. Which we'll find out what a little bit yes. later. Yeah. Uh, you know, back at the the factory, things are getting weird. Uh, the Venture flag has been painted over with with red. The orange jumpsuits are really big, and they have this scary monstrous voice. <laughs> uh, the white jumpsuits all have four arms, and Rusty is not really noticing. Mm-hmm. As he walks in, uh, Billy's like, close that door, get in here. Um, it's Billy's little lead line room, and he explains, you know, this place is an incubator for genetic mutations. Yeah. Uh, because of all the radiation. Yeah, so the white jumpsuits are now super smart, and they have telekinesis. And the orange guys, he couldn't draw any uh, draw any blood uh, because they developed a carapace. It's a bunch of Ben Grimm's running around. Yeah, I, lo- I love the orange guys. <laughs> uh, they're, they're very funny in this to me. Um, the, uh, hatred's like, that's not all. And he opens up his shirt and he has now has boobs. Yes. Uh, gigantic, uh, breasts. <laughs> I, I love that they are, that they are drawn and like incredibly detailed. Like they are very clearly, you know, fem- fem- feminine breasts and they can show them bare because they're attached to hatred. <laughs> yep. Yep. We defy you to masturbate to this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, where there's a yeah. will, there's a way, my friend. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 21 is raking up leaves uh, on the Sphinx perimeter and the monarch comes down and gets his attention. Uh, he's dressed in a clean suit. He thinks he killed one of the Venture brothers to get it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and 21's like, no, that's probably just a Palemon uh, intern. Yeah. You know, leave me alone again. And a monarch is not taking no for an answer. No, he wants to know what the pale men are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Hatred uh, shoots him off, does a warning shot. And before he leaves, he asks uh, 21 who the rightful heir to the Iron Throne is. He says da- Daenerys Targaryen, uh, trying to mind games him back into his employee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just say like, good times we had. hey, remember, remember talking about that show? It was fun, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, over at Hanko, Hank is selling an orange jumpsuit to a monstrously <laughs> big guy. <laughs> so good. It, it just cuts over to him. He's like, that'll be, you know, 38 Hank bucks. He goes, do they come in bigger? <laughs> 
Uh, and then he says, uh, well, you, no, but you can check in with our in-house tailor. And Dermot is just working there as a tailor. <laughs> I love how straight laced Dermot is on this. When yeah. he just like says, oh, yeah, nobody's eating out in this economy. It's just so. Like, it's very funny. Just great, like grown up Dermot, eyes on the prize, working his job here. What is he? Is he being paid in Hank Bucks? I had no idea. He just wants to be part of the gang. Yeah, uh, uh, hey, it's very funny. <laughs> Hatred calls over. He's running the. Uh, he's, he's he's running the the, the hash house here. Uh, says like, "Hey, do you want anything off the griddle?" And I just I, I love this. I love the delivery on this line. No griddle snacks. We only eat student green. <laughs> uh, no griddle <laughs> snacks is amazing. <laughs> Oh yeah, all the stuff with the uh, the orange or, orange clean suit guys are great. <laughs> uh, you know, Hank says like if, if the diner business doesn't pick up, he's gonna have to let him go. Uh, yeah. And like he's just like oh, I'm, like really upset. Mm-hmm. And that's where Dermot says it's the economy; people just aren't eating out like they used to. Just <laughs> pretty wise, Dermot. <laughs> uh, so a, a green clean suit is nervously uh, crossing the uh, the compound, and this the, this orange green suit, you know, says the uh, running errand for master like a good little Tom. Um, yes. and uh there's kind of a regrettable roots slavery yeah I angle don't care. to this whole thing i'm glad you said it and not me i don't care well, for they, that. they say it on the commentary too they, like they, they talk they, about yeah, yeah. Uh, there's, the, a, there's a lot of parody like that was that was your slave name like there's tons of roots parodies in this yeah that 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 probably wouldn't have been done today uh, like the fact yeah. that all the, the fact that all of them are called toms is a fun joke uh inside you know, like just it just happens to be that all, that all their names are Tom, but like turning that into like a weird racial thing is uh, it, it clangs a little bit in 2021. It's pretty bizarre. Yeah. Or you 2022 know? when people uh, are listening to this. Yeah. And, well, and it ends up being the, um, you know, again, some of the homage stuff that happens here where it's just characters saying lines from other things. Mm hmm. They're not things the characters would say. It just ends up as a reference for the audience. Yes. Like during the, the Kunta Kinte, like, what is your name? Mm-hmm. you know uh scene that's just for the audience yes yeah, so it's just to reveal you know? hatred's you know unfortunate first name yeah. yeah uh so so the big guy pulls off his hood he's he looks like killer croc <laughs> uh and then eats the green jumpsuit guy uh head first while hatred uh looks on after leaving his shift yeah yeah he's uh, tr- trying to figure out what uh what student green is so he can start serving it but you know oh god it's people student green is made out of people um yeah, little soil and green uh, reference there. Um, the, the, uh, they capture him at this point. He gets carried away by orange jumpsuits. There's a little cute little bit of trivia here where Jackson was doing research on this and found a YouTube clip of this, uh, with his crossfade thinking it was from the movie. Uh, but it was a YouTube edit. Mm-hmm. So he, you know, put a lot of work into matching this dissolve cut. That's not actually in soil and green. <laughs> it works though. I, I like it. You know, that, that, that kind of long dissolve would have been used in one of those films. So the green is so fucking boring. Oh my God. <laughs> Have you ever seen it? Oh God. Yeah, I've seen it. It's like yeah. nothing happens. <laughs> nothing happens. It's like the blandest thing. Yeah. It's, it's horrendous. Mm-hmm. It's a horrible movie. Yeah. Um, you know, eating people is scary. Uh-huh. How do you make it not scary? Yeah. You and know? just kind of save that detail for the end. You know, like, yeah. and it's well, then a lot of people in jumpsuits talking. Yeah. And it's mostly about like how messed up that society is. Like, you know, that's supposed to be the coup de gras on top. The big reveal literally right as the movie ends. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What a, what a bullshit movie. Yeah. Well, I'd give me Logan's run, please. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, so the Dusty gets a phone call at 3 a.m. Uh, JJ calling for a status update. You know, he's like, you can't, you can't take, uh, deliver this kind of hot news untested. Mm-hmm. And he's like, you can't test that in Earth's atmosphere. <laughs> well, you know, you better show up. Yeah. Uh, the, 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 la- uh, the last super scientist to try that is now billed as Palo the human beetle. But at least he's in show business, right? <laughs> yeah. So that's going to have a weird payoff mm-hmm. This uh, that we're going to get. Like, this is a through line, Palo the human beetle. Yeah. Uh, so it's 20, 27 hours to deliver. Um, he calls hatred to try to get him to get everybody into shape, but hatred is tied up in a hut next to the main Tom. Yeah. Uh, and this is where he, you know, the main Tom is like, I can't believe he hasn't figured out what's happening yet. <laughs> uh, Rusty's not exactly the, you know, the sharpest tool in the shed. Uh-huh. 
Yeah. Uh, so what's happening is Martin has taken control of the interns. You know, we have kind of an Eloy and Mor- Morlock thing going on. Uh, and uh, he's going to use the Palamon rays to mutate the entire world. They kind of have this uh, this apocalypse plan and Martin will, r- will rule over them. Uh, and again, just how quickly they, 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 they come up with this mythology and why it's an act is delivering this completely straight faced. But there's a story among our people that there will come a savior, the Lee Hun Tuk. <laughs> The uh, hatred calls us out. It's like, boy, you guys move fast. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I was like, well, we're just a bunch of college students. Of course we did. Yeah. And again, like, I I mean, I got to be me. It still just feels <laughs> weird for them to do that to me. Huh? I don't, people are dying. Yeah. Like, why are you playing in the game? You know, you're not guild operatives. You're just college students. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, your, uh, your commitment to this bit in the face of literally dying yeah. shows you know, it pushes my 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 disbelief. Yeah, I and guess I'm so much more grounded. And, and I and I that. think that I think that for me, you know, it may, maybe it's maybe it's kind of like the uh, the uh, everybody comes to Hank's thing, where like I, I the, the, it, like it it works, so I don't mind it. Like I think this is very funny, so I'm not tearing it apart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't. I I think that the parts of this that are funny to me are more in the small details, mm-hmm. like them just coming up with the mythology isn't inherently good to me. Yeah. Like Dean interfacing with the mythology is fun. Yeah. But them just doing it just feels stupid mm. to me. Yeah. I just, I, I love that they just, that, that, that they just have a nonsense sci-fi word for it because of course they do. Yeah. 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 It, it would make it to me if I, if I were going to do a, you know, I would chalk it up to the radiation or something like that. Yeah. So yeah. like it's accelerating, you know, they're, you know, it's changing their brains or something like that mm-hmm. rather than just being like, of course we're doing it. We're nerds. Yeah. Yeah. So you're going to die. Like mm-hmm. seconds after this, you get pulled away to be eaten alive. <laughs> you know, like it is so weird that you're just like down to do this little performance for hatred mm-hmm. in the face of literally being eaten alive. Yeah. You know? Uh, so he's, he's pulled away. He says, don't cry for me. Tell my story. <laughs> Uh, and then we get uh, another Charlton Heston thing. Uh, hatred is shouting. It's a madhouse, a madhouse from uh, uh, Planet of the Apes. Yes. Yep. Yep. Uh, so Dean is hanging out with uh, Talia in the the tunnels under the compound. Um, and she's trying to convince him, like, you know, you need to talk to your dad and do something because mm-hmm. uh, they're planning to mutate the entire world. Uh, I love this. This is one of my favorite jokes in this thing. She starts speaking to him telepathically. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, come challenge Tom for leadership and I'll be your queen. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you can think telepathically too. Just think it into my head. Mm-hmm. Uh, but all he can do is have this running commentary about what boobs are like. Yep. Uh, which him being really horrible at the silent tongue uh, <laughs> is very good to me. Just because he can't concentrate because he's a teenager. He's not touched yep. a boob yet. So he's wondering if some are soft and if some are extra soft. <laughs> yeah. And, and oh, yeah. Uh, Triana had boobs as well. You uh-huh. know, just like cataloging his I, his boob thoughts. Yeah, and I, she eventually is like, OK, let's not do that anymore. Yeah, you're, you're really bad at this. I hope they're not all mutated and dripping acid or something. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Very good. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, so um, the monarch and Doctor Miss the monarch. You know the the monarch wants to replicate this. He wants to create his own mutant army. You know when when when, when they raise the stakes, we we, we raise the stakes even more. Um, and it says you know the, the the orange ones are as big as Andre Giants, which is a I, fun I line. That. that is very Andre good. Giants is very funny. Yeah, and Doctor <laughs> Miss the monarch is explaining this, uh, examining the cells from the from the jump suits, saying like, yeah, they're really profoundly mutated. Something something awful's happening over there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so the monarch wants to do make his own counter mutants uh, yes. here, uh, kind of starting their their subplot. Mm-hmm. Uh, so at six a.m., uh, Rusty yells uh, at Billy for the crack team he's assembled for this, mm-hmm. uh, which is just the people who have been hanging around. Yeah, it's just, it's just know, all white the twenty one Dean Dermot. The only tank. just like all all their friends, the only people who have ever been there. <laughs> Sorry, I don't have Jason Statham on speed dial. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, a person they've they've. Uh, pinned their 94 theses uh, written in Klingon and high elven on someone's skin. Yep. Uh, to the wall of the factory. <laughs> just, just a whole, a whole skin flayed out like that. I love that it's tattooed on. Um, and you know, uh, 21 can you know, just barely read it and his be properly translated. Uh, but what they want is, uh, you know, for the sun to sh- to rise on the sons of Palamon with rays of global dominion. <laughs> 
Uh, this is this is where Billy just explains the ninety four theses. Yeah, which like to, to people I, I, inherently. I, I mean, I don't know. It feels like somebody who is old enough to watch the Venture Brothers understands that knows who Martin Luther was. It's weird the things in this show they'll let people look up. Yeah, because they'll constantly do. They'll drop a name and just drop the name. But something like this, they felt like this was in you know you had to understand. Yeah, what this was a reference to. Mm-hmm. You know, you could say just like, oh, they, <laughs> you know, make a joke like, ah, geez, all this and they're Lutherans or something. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Do a Lutherans joke. Uh, yeah. Like, it's like Wobegon. Yeah. Take take it to those Lutherans. <laughs> those uppity fucking Lutherans. <laughs> um, those cannibalistic, <laughs> mutated Lutherans. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, uh, Rusty calls them the B team and 21 takes charge at this point. Yeah. He loses uh, he's patience. like, this is, you know, this is ridiculous. Yeah. So um, he, he gives everybody their jobs. Dermot and Hank are going to keep watch. They're going to provide a uh, recon for them. Billy and Peter, Pete are going to work on decontamination because they can't get in there to you know get the machine and deliver it. And Rusty is going to work on reversing the mutations, possibly the most important thing, the most delicate thing, and the thing that Rusty is least equipped to do. Yeah, he does not do it. No. Uh, we'll get into. Um, so back in the indie, uh, Eden, Hadrian is being whipped. As Martin is, you know, as he's in sorry, as Martin is asking him what his name is, mm-hmm. uh, not his slave name. Uh, yes. This is Roots, then just performing the scenes from Roots, mm-hmm. uh, the scene from Roots to the audience. Yeah. Roots, uh, famous 70s uh, miniseries about slavery. Yeah. About LeVar uh, Burton. Yeah, LeVar Burton. Yeah. Breakout role. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's real good. I remember liking it as a kid. Who knows what, what stands up like now, but I remember thinking it was really great. I watched it, I we young. watched it in a uh, college. We watched it for a class and it would, it's, it's still, it's, I mean, I liked it then that was, you know, more than 10 years ago, but yeah. Yeah. Roots is good. Yeah. Um, Talia brings Dean up, uh, you know, to challenge. Um, and Martin says he can't be, uh, there cause he's an outsider, but he will accept the challenge. Yes. Uh, cause you know, d- d- Dean calls him a puss, you know? Yeah. Um, and they have to, they, they have to select their champion. I, I should have written down what they call their champion or whatever. And it's funny because yeah, the champions I, don't end up doing anything. Uh, Dean picks hatred and Courtney, <laughs> hatred admits that his first name is Courtney. I had my grandma or whatever. And then he stops explaining. He says, Hey, just don't tell anybody. Yeah. There, there's no, does this, I can't remember if this pays off or does anything. No. If the idea is just that he has one of those names that could be a girl's name. Yeah. I think the and idea is literally just the, the point of the scene is to do roots yeah. And then reveal that limp fart of a joke. Yeah. I think like, that might be it. I don't know. Yeah. This should have been cut. It's not worth it. <laughs> um, I, yeah. I, I do like it. Martin being like, I choose my main man, Matt. And it's just this big ogre comes over and gives him a high five. Yep. Uh, well, it's a, so it's two high fives. Matt uh, just in one motion hits both yes. of his hands on the right. <laughs> yeah, it's very cute. Yeah. Um, so Rusty's sleeping at his, at his computer playing Oregon Trail, uh, and Pete and Billy yell at him for just like, you know, because he said he was rusting his, rusting his eyes. Like, what are you, my dad? Uh, you know, he's not working on it. The de- decontamination plan is ready. Uh, they need the plasma engine from the floating platform, but Rusty sold it to St. Cloud. Yeah. Uh, despite it being priceless memorabilia. Yeah, but Billy is furious. You know, even names the episode that it was from. It was like the tale of the disappearing space boy or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, Rusty says, oh, I've been running the simulations and all of them resulted in death. He's just been playing Oregon Trail. He gave up before it even started. He knows about uh, Palo Salazar, you know, the, the human beetle guy. Uh, if he couldn't fix genetic mutations, there's no hope that Rusty could. We cut over to uh, Dr. Mrs. the Monarch explaining Palo uh, Salazar to the Monarch. Um, a top scientist mutated himself into a bug man. Um, you know, shortly after that happened, uh, he, you know, that he became a circus performer who was presumed dead. And then a beetle themed supervillain, uh, started stealing all this science stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Dr. And Mrs. The Monarch managed to recover his notes. Uh, and the Monarch, uh, begs her for sex since he's very rubbed up from her, uh, being it's, into science. Yeah. It's There's the, a, the, the great line delivery where she's like, I have to finish my work. And he goes, finish me. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm all rubbed yeah. up from this heart to heart style repartee. Oh yeah. man. Oh, very good. So um, I love the training video that Augustus St. Cloud is watching oh, is when great. it cuts over to him. Because yeah. Dr. Z, uh, you know, talking about how to spot a blunderer. And, and, a and, blunderer. A blunderer. Yeah. And it's very, very relatable in the commentary when you hear them talking about like, oh, yeah, we were just taking on Dr. Z calling everything a blunderer. You know, <laughs> I love the bit. Um, 
in the commentary they talk about Dean drinking bodega sodas. Uh huh. <laughs> and how they wanted to get Brock to be in, get into Pocky. <laughs> So yeah. Have yeah, Patrick going Warburton out. be like, going to the bodega, give me a pa, pocky. <laughs> if, if you go pocky. going out, like, bring me some pocky, a pocky. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's really, the idea of Brock Love and Pocky is very funny. Oh, gosh. It just, it's just, it's his one vice audition to the cigarettes mm-hmm. and the sex. <laughs> so, so, but just, yeah, the, them doing an impression of Warburton saying pocky is very good. Very cute. Yeah. Uh, he turns off the TV because he hears a noise. He asks Pai Wei, uh, who is his uh, Asian albino. P-Y. Much more <laughs> or P-Y. Yeah. Uh, to go uh, check out the noise, uh, Pete and Billy run into the staff of Ra that they have there making the noise. Uh, they think that somebody perhaps crapped themselves, but it's a corpse flower. Yes. Uh, that grabs them. Gobbles them up, and Augustus walks down wearing his dorky, uh, his, his, his dorky uh, costume. Uh, it's like a gold magneto helmet with just some storm clouds around it. Yeah, <laughs> the same cloud uh, hat is great. Mm-hmm. Um, um, the uh, he t- tells his plant to let them go, Slagathor. <laughs> it is a cutting from the plant uh, from the movie Voodoo Island uh, with uh, Boris Karloff and Adam West. Uh, he says the wrong release here, and uh, uh, Billy corrects him again furiously. He doesn't even care. He doesn't even know what he has. <laughs> yeah. Yep, yep. Uh, Billy says, like, hey, we're just here to get the, the, the platform. And Augustus says he'll give it to him. It'll only cost him $1, the amount that he's, uh, Billy sniped him at an auction. Uh, and gives him a can with one dollar worth of pennies and tells Billy to eat them. Eat the pennies. Uh, Come on, eat just the eat the pennies. I'm not gonna eat good. the pennies. <laughs> this could have gone on for ten minutes, and I would it's have loved funny. it. It's very funny. It's real good. <laughs> just eat the pennies. Uh, the uh, Augustus is even willing to the throw in a uh, helper. Mm-hmm. Uh, cause Rusty sold helper. I just, <laughs> it's so sad. And Pete, like even Pete's like, Oh God, that's just cold. Like it's unacceptable yeah. that he did this. And helper is just in a display case with other robots. <laughs> yep. Slowly going insane. Yep. Uh, Billy makes his counter proposal. Uh, winner takes all, uh, one question trivia, uh, contest. Mm-hmm. Um, and if, uh, Billy loses, Augustus gets Pete. He's collecting <laughs> albinos now. Yeah. So he doesn't just um, have, you, you know, the, the, the Pete white equivalent, which is this, this mute albino Asian man. Uh, but he wants the actual one as well. Um, yeah. uh, yes. And St. Cloud is you know excited about this because he can show off, you know, kind of the, the, the piece de resistance from his, uh, from his collection. He you know, clicks a button, the wall opens up and it is the full set from the quiz boys TV show. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so Dermot and Hank report uh, to 21 about people being eaten in the Eden uh, there. 21 calls Rusty, who's on the toilet, um, you know, and they think he's having a push mm. uh, there. And Rusty, you know, pushes back on that, <laughs> that terminology. Yeah. It's so gross. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, i love that this is just echoed over with the with the monarch who also just like as a lark calls it a push without realizing just like oh i don't even know where i heard that that's vile and and dr girlfriend's like that is foul (laughs) (laughs) it's like a really nasty phrase for it yeah just it's just one of those euphemism that is actually worse than saying the thing yeah uh rusty explains the the cure he came up with which is just roofies again it's yep. like pot mixed with roofies like yep. his cure to everything is roofies yeah it's it's it's, um, it's, it's roofies antibiotics with, with, with a little bit of baby aspirin yeah, yeah. just it, yeah pathetic mm-hmm. uh 21 calls hatred uh he says hey we can't really talk now we're inside and dean is in trouble yeah um talia addresses the the assembled children of palemon uh here to witness the challenge uh there yeah. Um, and uh, Hadrid's, you know, they think they're going to fight at this point. Hadrid tells uh, him, you know, some tips like, hey, Martin's new arms are weak, you know, and awkward. This is going to put him off balance. But Dean chooses his own mode of combat, which is way of the Indian. Yeah. Uh, which are all the little kid uh, Indian games, yeah. uh, you know, that use that as the prefix. Yes. Uh, so like then and they start doing this this little combat montage where they're doing Indian sunburn, you know, the thing where you grab somebody's forearm and then just kind of twist to do like skin mm-hmm. abrasions. Um, I, I, I was unfamiliar with this eating, eating a bunch of crackers and then whistling. Uh, yeah. Game. I don't know what that is. Yeah. I don't know what that is. Uh, and then they're doing a leg wrestle. And Dean know. wins. 
Yeah. And, and the commentary, they're like, yeah, just this, uh, you know, this Eagle Scouts, this Eagle Scouts idea uh, of, of, <laughs> of what Native American culture was like. Yeah. 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 Very good. Yeah. Um, uh, Talia declares that the second age has begun at yeah. this point. Um, back at the St. Clouds, Pete has retaken his uh, his role as the host of the show. I like how P- P.Y. Uh, is clapping for, for Augustus. He's down in the little sunken lounge, um, and he scowls when Billy is announced. Mm-hmm. Uh, they do one question uh, here. Uh, how many robots are in Helper's cabinet? Uh, Augustus says five, because there's one of them wearing another robot as a necklace. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he, uh, Billy counters it's four. Uh, because one of them, Nomad One, is never called a robot. Yep. This, this drove me nuts. It's clearly a robot. It's like a thinking machine that mm-hmm. goes around and moves and stuff. It's such a robot. Yeah. Like, if I were Augustus St. Cloud, I would not accept this. Yeah. This isn't trivia. This is just as a hot dog a sandwich, which it makes sense it's for... exactly. Yeah. It, it, yeah. It, it, it makes sense for for them as that particular kind of dork to be into it. Um, yeah. Augustus accepts his defeat gracefully, but he does swear revenge. Yeah. Uh, again, I want like I, I want to, the penny stuff is funny. I want to like this a little bit more than I do, but it doesn't mm-hmm. it doesn't make any sense. The character action doesn't make any sense mm. to me. You yeah. can put up with it. It's yeah, it's hot dog a sandwich yeah. stuff. Um, but, you know, it gets them the thing they need. Yes. To, to do the thing. Yeah. Uh, so Rusty is in the tunnels. He hooks up his antidote gas to the ventilation system going into Eden. Uh, he calls 21. 21 has deciphered these theses and says, like, yeah, uh, you know, so they're going, going to uh, bring about the apocalypse. They're going to mutate everybody. Uh, but all Rusty hears is that the race shield is done. Like, oh, that's the best news I've heard all day. And this is where we get, a, you know, favorite line of the episode. Don't take this as an insult, but working for you and the monarch, it's like the same thing. <laughs> Yeah, very good. Yeah. Uh, ni- nice little bit uh, there. Uh, the cocoon heads off towards the Venture compound. Um, the monarch has his plan. He's going to open the hatch on the Eden uh, and send his m- henchman out like a mighty push. <laughs> uh, and just, again, Dr. Mr. Monarch, like, oh, just visceral reaction. <laughs> can, can you just call it a movement? Yeah. Yeah. And he doesn't know where he got it. The The implication, him and 21, one of them got it from the other one. Yeah. That's why they both say it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the uh, Pete and Billy are driving back on the platform, you know, really excited after uh, besting their their arch enemy. Um, Pete's like, we can even uh, we can keep this. We want it fair and square. We can even keep helper. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Billy's like, no more robots. You never even play with Robobo anymore. Get a cat. Play with uh, Robobo. Very sad. You never play with Robobo anymore. <laughs> Robobo. Oh. I mean, he's, he's sentient. Yeah. Like, he needs stimulation. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> he's going to die. Yeah. He needs it. Uh, but this no. uh, but this uh, transmission is interrupted. The cocoon arrives, and we are in kind of the action climax of this as everything kind of goes. Yep. Uh, so the Moppets go up, and they cut a hatch open uh, for them to uh, dispense the mutants. Um, and inside, all of the children <laughs> are uh, doing just uh, are, are welcoming in the second age, doing Ewok dances and singing. Um, Pele, mom. <laughs> just do that, that weird chain. little Ewok pop song that the Ewoks play. <laughs> Yep. Yeah, they invented gentle pop music. Yeah. Uh, Talia comes up to Dean, you know, and and is like, you know, Dean's like, we have to stop this. And she's like, no, like, we want the second age. I'll be your queen. We'll rule the world. We'll make out on make out and stuff. Mm-hmm. And he basically <laughs> then declares himself the Lee Hyung Cook took. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's, he's down for it. Yes, he is. He, he is swayed by kissing with tongues. <laughs> yes yeah uh 21 catches a ride on the floating platform um as they uh, go up to the cocoon but uh he, he slips and uh he, he squeaks down the side of the dome we get a good so get, get a good look at his gut and his hench for life uh tattoo um as uh the the pipe extends and the monarch calls for the mutants to be d- deployed he doesn't even care that uh, 21 has gotten a hold of the moppets yes uh, the, uh, so butterflies end up, uh, coming out of the tube instead, injecting the in- interns with a liquid, uh, there at the same time, Rusty opens, uh, the tank to put the decontamination gas in there. Um, so the Monarch is like, why aren't there mutants coming out? And Dr. And Mrs. The Monarch brings out Paulo Salazar who managed to change himself back. He's yeah. the, the world's foremost expert on reversing mutations. Mm-hmm. Um, do you, do you know, like what did this? Did this follow for you? 
Like, why did Dr. Mrs. The Monarch, like, she's like, you know, you don't fight fire with fire, you fight it with water. Yeah. Stopping all of these things. No, that followed. Uh, like, he's, he still gets to win, and they don't have to deal with a bunch of unpredictable mutants running around their house. I, that's what she says, but it never seemed like the monarch cared about dealing with unpredictable mutants. Well, well, like he takes this really easily too. It just feel like he wanted the the Andre Giants. Yeah, I mean, he, he he accepts it. Like he he's resistant to it, but then she says, "Oh, you win. You know, you get to win, and we don't have to deal with that." And he accepts it because it's a win. Yeah, yeah. I don't. Which know, is, it doesn't feel. Which is all that he matters. Doesn't feel like the yeah. monarch to me. Yeah. I think he'd want the mutant army. Yeah. That's like his whole thing. Yeah. You know, I just, I, 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 I think it, he's, I think he's petty enough to take it. It petty. It, it feels unpetty to me mm-hmm. oh. to do it. It would be a win if he had the mutants. Cause he wants the mutants. Yeah. You know, he wanted the, uh, he wants the big super science shit. He's the same, yeah. you know, same monarch who like had rusty in a marionette. Yeah. Like he doesn't want to <laughs> just cure his enemy. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I disagree, but that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just I just, yeah, I just don't see it. Yeah. It makes the episode really neat. Mm-hmm. Like neat in a, a it wraps up. Yeah. Kind yeah. of way. You know, but it, ends, it still ends up feeling like an anticlimax to me. Like I don't know what the emotional payoff yeah. is meant to be here. Like what is what is the payoff for the monarch part of this? Oh, know? just 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 that he got another another win and the game continues. I don't know. Yeah. I don't, it doesn't feel that doesn't feel satisfying to me. Yeah. Um, you know, or it doesn't feel like it would be satisfying to him and yeah. also doesn't feel satisfying to me. Consequently, I can see that. Yeah. Um, the, uh, so the, the gas starts spraying up in the cocoon. This is, uh, Rusty's roofie mix. Um, it's pot smoke basically. Yeah. Um, and yeah. the cocoon, uh, pulls away. Yeah. And it sounds like, yeah, we got massive amounts of narcotics pumping in. Uh, so they yeah. get that. Uh, and it's later in the morning. They, 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 they get the pale of Monterey into the plane. Uh, JJ has, uh, got his, uh, he's got his piece of priceless venture ingenuity. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, Billy can't believe that the decontamination gas worked and neither, neither can Rusty because it didn't. He just knocked yeah. everybody out. No, Dr. Girlfriend did it. Yeah. Um, all the interns are all dazed. They're unmutated. They don't remember anything, mm-hmm. uh, here, including Dean and the girl he made out with. So that's sad. Yeah. Uh, he doesn't get to keep his memory of it. <laughs> I, I do. Um, I do I like, like the Hank's. way. Yeah, the the way that yeah. lines up with Hank. Like, you know, Dean's like, "Oh, do I know that girl? I think we made out or something." Check your watch. That works for me sometimes. <laughs> yeah, that's a great line. That's yeah. a, that's a very good callback. Yeah. Uh, Twenty one looks down and hatred is like, "Why do you still have tits?" Uh, and that's our cut to credits. Mm-hmm. Um, the post credit credits is Monarch and Doctor Misses the Monarch being high. Yeah, a little bit of a. It's kind of limp. Together. Yeah does not uh, continue stuff. So it's like, a, like the individual jokes in this episode, I end up, there are a bunch of them I like. Mm-hmm. Uh, it does sit, uh, it sits with me weird. Yeah. Can't, can't lie. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I enjoy the pastiche, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's hitting buttons, the hitting buttons that I enjoy. Um, I like the jokes and stuff. I agree that the ending, you know, it's, it, it is a little bit uh, kind of too, too clean or whatever, but I just, it's just one of those things. Maybe it's just uh, varying sensitivities. It's not, it's not getting in the way as much for me as it is for you. Yeah. I think that uh, for me in a general sense, I don't love when the Venture Brothers does pastiche without, without a little bit more twist to it. Yeah. Yeah. It's you more satisfying. It's more satisfying and everybody comes to Hank's because that is, that, that is entirely about a very important part of Hank's character, you know, yeah, that, and it that, carries that, the macro plot yeah. forward a lot, mm-hmm. you know, um, it, it, that felt like there are parts of that, that were like, you know, didn't work for me because they just felt like pastiche being displayed. Mm-hmm. But at the very least it was, it made sense within the world because it was Hank's, you know, weird brain. Yeah. It's, a, you know, it's, make, it's him it full, fully inhabiting whatever, uh, which, whichever costume he wears. Right. And, and now it's like Hank's brain is inside out. Yeah. And everyone is in the brain, mm-hmm. you know, and just feel, it just feels a little weird. It's not a death knell, but it's mm-hmm. just a little bit weird to me. Yeah. So, and I, there are a couple of jokes I also think are hacky in this. Uh, I think hatred having breast is hacky. Yep. I think him being named Courtney is hacky. Mm hmm. You know, I don't, I don't know exactly what the joke is. It feels like they should have worked harder. Yeah. On yeah. that. To but me. Th- th- this is also kind of the start of them not knowing what to do with hatred uh, to a certain yeah. degree. You know, like there's a little bit of character rot for him, you know, uh, especially. You as, never really figure it out. Yeah. You know, he, he gets nothing to do in the New York zone. 
Yeah. I uh, hear. But it, it just, it's, it feels like too much of like a, it feels like the joke is beneath them to like, what if we just made this character have tits? Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. So good, good, good episode. Some, some really great moments to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah. no, gr- no griddle snacks. <laughs> yeah. I love, I love, I love everything with the, with the orange jumpsuits. That's very <laughs> funny to me. It does come in bigger. Uh, all of that stuff is very funny to me. And I think that the guest stars do a really great, great job. Mm-hmm. Uh, in this, uh, you know, I always loathe to praise Aziz Ansari, uh, given that he had that really horrible date experience <laughs> thing. Yeah, but it, uh, it, he's he's very funny in this. He, he does a good work. Like, well, like when he selects when he selects his uh, his weapon for the challenge, he's like, I, I pick the so and so blade that that shines like the moon. <laughs> yeah, it's it's very good. Like yeah. you just you know him doing that Randy voice. Yeah. Uh, and that stuff is very cute. Mm-hmm. Kim McKinnon's obviously awesome in this. It's a uh, it's. It's good. Yes. It just, yeah. It it just doesn't feel as Venture Brothers to me as I want it to. Yeah. I think I could see it. So, uh, in the next episode, we have Venture Libre, another episode I remember very little about, other than just being a Doctor Moreau parody. Which that would also make sense for me, just being like, oh, they're just parading. Yeah, things. yeah. There's, you know, yeah, yeah. Kind getting, of a bummer. Get get getting get into that. Uh, get get into that part of the whiteboard. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, thanks everybody for listening. We appreciate you. Mm-hmm. Uh, welcome to 2022. Yep. Um, uh, it's the same. It, yeah. No, no, there, 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 there's, there, there's no reason to expect it to be different. That'd be weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if, uh, you want to help us out, you can go to patreon.com slash duck TV and, uh, kick us a few bucks a month that supports the network and also gets you like whole bonus shows. There's a ton of, a uh, ton of bonus content there for you to peruse. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you can also, uh, leave ratings reviews on Apple podcasts or podcast addict, mm-hmm. both of which are very appreciated. And if you have venture brothers, buddies, tell them about the show. Yeah. If you have thoughts about season five, as you listen, go ahead and write in, go to duckfeed.tv slash contact and click the orb button. Yeah. And just, uh, you know, first episode of, uh, season five of the show, mm-hmm. big shout out to Brayden Cameron, our announcer. Yeah. And Gwen Static, uh, who composed our theme song. And also a uh, special thanks to uh, Joshua Jarrett for our uh, for our podcast art, for our cover art. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and until next time. Go, go Team, team Venture. Venture.